Hello and welcome to another Free Code Session. My name is Jason Bach and I still have Alan to my side here. Howdy. Hello. And uh, we're going to continue on at least getting some, making some appreciable gains on um, uh, on this analyzer. you got to get the gains. Mm -hmm. Talking about the weightlifting before. Um, so the reason why, um, and uh, I should clarify that, you know, this is not necessarily Alan's domain per se. Like you, like we were talking about, you've never written analyzers before, you know. So, and and you you can kind of get and follow what's going on. But some of this may be like a little. Well, wait a minute. Why did you just do what you're doing here? Um, and I should also clarify too, just the fact of why am I looking for method declaration? Of course, I just closed the extensibility project, but um, I could do this just by this code here that Rocky has as a demo code. Is I don't care if you're creating a property or if the the analysis engine in Visual Studio is going through your code as you're loading it and it's now looking at the property definition or a namespace declaration. It doesn't all I care about is to start with is are you doing something actually ooh, this is good. This is good why I'm talking about it, because in the case of this rule, it is not a method declaration, it is a class declaration. Because we're checking the inheritance of what class you're coming from. Okay, now I gotta I gotta think about this one for a second because we do need to look at what you're inheriting from, but I do need to see: Are you an execute call that's being done from a class that derives when property rules bad here? It's really business rule and does an async void so those those are like the conditions we have to find so I, I do in this case I still need to do it from a method declaration okay so I just talked myself into it again all right so now what do I need to do I need to say where are your regions <laughs> <laughs> Where are my regions? Yeah, out the window, <laughs> in the trash. We need to have regions for uh, <laughs> collapsible code sections. <laughs> yeah, region <laughs> method node declaration, and then we'll say yeah. end, end region. region. Yeah. Because those are so helpful. And now you've got that. Yeah, you can collapse it. See, yeah. <laughs> and away goes the code. Yeah. I just added two lines <laughs> to hide one. I, I have opinions. Yeah. We can do the next episode on regions. <laughs> Re region Short, usefulness. Shortest episode yeah. ever. Regions suck. Don't use them. And I, I know some people get in like religious debates about it. And, and yeah. I'll say the only time that I found them useful was coming from a VB6 background way back when .NET started. Yeah. Um, that... The VB6 code, and oh, if if any of you have always been coming behind perfection of code, let me know because I've never seen that in my life. But files and modules and things tended to be way too long and not following good patterns of practice. And some of that was carried over when .NET started and, and typing in it or in creating code in it. So um, regions for a early time on, it felt like, like the O2 to 05 period were a way to organize what had traditionally been very messy and verbose. And it was just kind of like having different shoe boxes in the closet to put things in. Now, subsequently the IDE has gotten very powerful. It is noisy and all these other things. And I don't see anybody using them now. So it sounds like what you're saying is that regions is only good for crappy it, legacy code. It can be, it was, it was, a. it was, it was like, it, 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 it kind of, I guess it was, it was kind of cleaning up, you know, some bad practices where you'd have these modules and classes that were too big for the brain. They, they should not have been that big. Yeah. And when you have a 2000 line class, regions are actually a bit of a saving grace because they're what happens when you have 2000 lines in a class or a module back in vb.net is you definitely are doing more than one thing that that class shouldn't be doing so essentially right. it is it's code smell to say you have 15 regions that probably should be 15 different classes yeah and so um yeah they they that, that's what they were doing that's what it was masking that yeah, then um, that that's usually the way I've seen, I've never seen it used for anything um, constructive or helpful or any you know usually 
every time I see a region in code, it's because somebody is trying to do something bad and hide it. It's never, and, and if it's like, well, I do it for code organization, then just organize your code that way. Why well, have, you know, just put all the things in the right spots. I will say this, there is, I've been teaching a C-sharp course internally at Magenic, and somebody jokingly, because they know my view on regions, um, teased me about, what do you think about regions, Jason? And we, you know, laughed, ha, ha, ha. But he, I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but he actually brought up a case from like, okay, that I could see you might want to use a region for. So to say that I absolutely never allow them is not true. I can be persuaded. I can be persuaded. There was, and I wish I could remember the case. The use actually, case? Yeah. So you, well, and I'll tell you another thing. I don't know how long it's been or if you've worked in um corporate app type development mm -hmm. these types of shops typically have a suite of internal applications supporting all businesses across whatever domain you're working in and typically you have a development manager and you have a bunch of developers and trying to drive consistency about the way that applications were written was a challenge so when net came about and i was doing that in the enterprise and uh regions and again, I know it, but every single app you'd open, like they would do regions, it'd be like private and maybe public variables. Then it was like events and then it was like custom methods. So you would like control and control O and every single app you would see code written the same way in the same spot and the same. So it made it easier to kind of go around. Yeah. I'm not necessarily saying that regions made that any better because you could argue and say, well, if everybody just put it in those order and had code standards and then you could do that. But it was, it was these means to an end to drive consistency at the time, I think is what it was. Cause they were in the code standard. These are your regions you're going to use. Right. Um, the other thing I don't like about, well, one other thing I don't like about them, many other reasons. One of them is if you open it up in a, in a editor, just any text editor, that they're, they're kind of relying upon an editor that can help you expand and collapse yeah, them. Yeah. If you're not there, then it becomes a lot of like just no noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I get. Yeah. A lot of times I don't do that. Yeah. And it's a minor thing, but yep. still. Um, yep. Here's another case where somebody actually brought up one um, where it might be helpful in certain cases. So I'm just going to say X, Y, Z here, and then I'll say end region, and then we'll end the discussion on regions. Um, somebody actually, I saw came up with a because the idea of like aspect growing programming code weaving all this other stuff a lot of times when you see people try to do that within net they in some ways use attributes to say hey this method should do things that i want to weave code into later but within a method there's no way to put like just arbitrary attributes in a lot of places within a method definition so um somebody suggested well what you could do in your code is actually use a region and then here you could put any arbitrary text that when you parse the code using something like Roslyn, um, you would actually look at the text for that region element, which we can actually see if we go to the syntax visualizer and click on that. That is a region directive trivia. And so you could see, like you see the region keyword uh, and a directive. This actually is pre-processing message trivia. The point is, is that this text is captured somewhere. And so you could grab that text out and potentially say, okay, within this region, these are the things I want to do to the code in here. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. interesting. That, that's kind of an interesting yeah. trick, you know, that you could do that. Yeah. Um, because you can't put the attributes or whatever right there. You, you, you use it again as a means to an end to do something else. Yeah. Right. And I, my first reaction when I saw it, I was like, oh God, they're using regions. But I had to grudgingly admit and go, that's not, I mean, it, it fits the purpose. You know, so was this a use case you were thinking about? By the way, you no, were trying to remember. Something, okay, no, all right. something else. I can't remember what it is, but um, it was one that I actually thought about. I'm like, yeah, okay. So anyway, back to the method declaration. The first thing we need to do is if we're on the method, do you use tabs or spaces. To, uh, I use <laughs> I use tabs, but. Rocky use spaces, but because we have editor configs now, I don't care. So you see all those spaces, those ugly, ugly spaces? I don't care because the editor config, and to be, I know we're joking here, but to be honest, this was actually the thing that bugged me about it in Visual Studio 
was if you go into your options, you go to text editor and C sharp and you have to go to tabs. If I would do something in CSLA, I'd have to always come here and put insert spaces. And then I have to remember when I go into my nice projects that do it right to go back to saying keep tabs. Um, but now an editor config makes you can have it care. your own way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it follows your repo and it doesn't matter. So, and, and, I always say to people, I don't really, unless you use, you would insist on using full type names that were instead of var, that would actually bug me. But, um, you know, even if they, even if you did that, like you can say here, and I think you get a refactoring to say use explicit type, and mm -hmm. then it would just change it, and you can actually do that. Well, in this case, it doesn't give you a lot of options, but um, sometimes you could just say do that everywhere, and then you don't even have to think about, well, what is the full type name? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, so it will change all of those, but not look like code commits, or is it just? No, it will, it will be code commit. Okay, because it actually okay, it's not just a local editor config setting that. Well, it is, but it would it helps you do it the right way. Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. So, all right, um, and that's again, it's consistency. I, I'm to me, that's the biggest thing in code base is you want to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Okay, where do I do this again? There's places where I look to say I'm doing something in a method. But what I really need to look at, maybe it's the constructor analog, because I want to copy and paste code. So yes, I get a class. Um, that's, that's for a class. Um, <coughs> oh, that, that might be a good one. Does child operation, because that is a method. And then we need, we'll always need the first thing to go is like, in a lot of these you'll see is like go and I have this extension method to say is stereotype. Because of what it, I don't care if the, even if you have a method called execute, you may have declared that on some other class. And I don't care about that. I only care about if it's the execute method on a business rule. So um, we're going to take method symbol because we want to get probably the method symbol and the type symbol. So we'll grab those first. Um, and there we go. But now I have to say if if type symbol is business rule. So I've got to write that myself. And to do that, we're gonna go in extensions, go to I type single sections. Because your your syntax nodes, that's just like all the structural parts of your code. So your nodes, your tokens, your um, trivia but there's no real good semantics around what you're doing there it's just i know this is a class declaration the semantic model is like a step above it so it goes oh i know this is a type symbol oh i know this is a method symbol but it's not like reflection that far so that's the the the, the semantic symbol stuff so what i need to do here is say is it a business rule is business rule except what I want to say is public. I love this check here this is a trick business rule equals name of business rule I've showed that to people and they go that is disgusting but if you want to make a constant based off the name of something you can just do that and it just um well actually i'm i'm am i doing this the way you mean I'm... instead of hard coding the string is that what you're saying yeah the so name I, of because that's literally the name of the business rule but i okay see now i'm i'm i think i've really done this wrong <laughs> which is that's not necessarily what i wanted what i want is um the name of csla uh business rule and I can't. That's right. I don't do that here. Okay. I'm, I'm actually doing what I want to do right. I don't reference the CSLA assembly from this analyzer project. So for, for reasons. And therefore, I need to have the actual right names of things from CSLA. So I need to know that this is actually the word business rule. But I declare it as that, the, the constant as that. And I just say name of that. And so now it's a little string of that. And so it ends up working out, which is kind of nice. So here I need to say, is that type symbol basically a business rule? Um, 
Or, you know what, I'm actually going to run that analyzer, the, the extension project again, because I want to, like, know what is the actual true, oh, of course there's, I, writing code that doesn't compile, I should check that in. <laughs> Never had that happen. <laughs> Never had that happen on a project where you get what latest it? and a, it B? doesn't even actually build. How about that example, A, B, C yeah. equals A, X. <laughs> yes. That was just dummy code that I was putting in to look at something. Because I actually probably put that in, and then I went to the syntax visualizer to see, oh, this is the node uh, in the yeah, tree, and then it. I just okay. did not yeah. delete it. I just forgot. Um, and like you said, blanket just mm. rubber stamped. <laughs> Rocky accepted it. It's Jason. It must be good code. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so actually what I really care about is, is it a business rule or business rule base? Like what is the true core thing? Um, well, I noticed business rule actually has the execute rule on it. And then there's business rule async, which has the execute async on it. So I think that's where I really want to go with this. So if I come back here, and I want to actually mimic, where is his stereotype? Because that's really what I want to follow. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to come up here, put that code here. And then we need to say, basically is the name of it a business rule, except... I don't want to say that. I want to say rename to I business rule because it's actually what it is. Okay. Do you find that funny to still use the I in front? It's almost like um, Hungarian notation that we it overlooked. Is. And uh, TypeScript actually says don't do it. Yeah. They, I mean, but in their own standards, they say, you know, it's superfluous, basically. Yeah, don't, well, don't do it. TypeScript's... Um, typing system is actually like interfaces, but you have structural typing, you don't have nominal typing. So that actually makes a lot more sense to me in TypeScript because the notion of an interface is almost super, super, super plus, mm -hmm. that, that word. Um, it It's not as I, mean, I can't think of the right. Well, it's not a real thing. It, it doesn't transpile to anything in JavaScript. It does. It's, it, it's, right. it's just a it's just a build time constraint. Right. Type but type the, constraint. Yeah. But the the notion of an interface and what a type is and do you structurally match that type is actually much better than what you can do in, in C sharp. I think. Um, it's just one of these things that has stuck around for so yeah. long. It doesn't and, give me heartburn. And, actually, I really don't. I I just. And most, it's interesting. And, and a lot of things within. Um, net itself uses that convention yeah so you're almost like fighting this yeah and then it makes it inconsistent so All right so if the name is business rule and you're actually within do i ever actually check the namespace no i do not i just look to say are you actually in csla because that's probably good enough um then i have to recursively look at the base type and see if it's a business rule or any of the interfaces is a business rule. And I'll add unit tests around this later. I will have to do that. But now I can say, uh, yes, I am a business rule. And what's the next thing? So if we come back here, we say, I am a business rule. And, well, okay, so business rule and the method that I'm on the method symbol dot no oh, method symbol dot name is equal to execute not execute async because that would mean you're you're inheriting from I business rule async so you're probably doing it right in the first place. This is just if it's a business rule. And method symbol is async. Oh Damn, that's not where it is. Method node is async. Okay, where is that? I know there's a way to say is async. Because uh, I've, I've done something like this. Async is fine operation. Yeah, it's right there. It's a, 
<coughs> it's a method symbol, declared symbol, method symbol, we get declared symbol. What's well, a method symbol? That's just a symbol. Well, then why are you... It's a model. It's a declared symbol. And we're giving it a method node. I am missing something here. Declared symbol. Don't you feel like stupid sometimes? So you're casting that, right? The, the member yeah, which is what the other one is declared as, right? Yeah, method declaration syntax coming in. Right, and so that's your method node. And that's what gets passed to get declared symbol. That's your model, and that's from the semantic model, which is this. I wonder... Okay, so I, I looked up is async before, because I knew I had used it somewhere, and this was one of them. Um, and then this just... Because I'm actually have in this project I reference CSLA just itself because I use it in the tests. Um, I don't use it here though. So so somehow I need to actually get to a um, I should be able to see here as I method symbol. And there it you pops go. Up. Um, and I think that's okay because if I if I'm looking at a member oh that's why because I'm an idiot. So this is why you have to talk to the bear. All right. <laughs> Explain. So what did we? This is supposed to be not a member declaration syntax. It's supposed to be a method declaration. Oh, syntax. okay. That's why I was Remember when we went we, back. Yeah. Okay. So all we of these. We looked too quickly at yeah, the other example. Exactly. Because that's what it was being passed in as a method declaration syntax, right? Well, it's just a syntax node analysis context. Once it navigates the definition, I think we'll. Because this inherits from that. This is all Roslyn stuff, which is not easy to get through. And then you finally derive from member declaration syntax. So all these like class declaration, method declaration, property declaration, they all declare from they all derive from that. I just typed that in too fast, and like you said, I didn't notice that it was member. As soon as I made a method, then this lit up because now this override, if you pass it in a method declaration syntax, gives you back a method. There you syntax. go. Okay, so we know it's a business rule. We know the method we're in is called execute, and that method is a sync, and method symbol um, return type equals, um, I'm going to say void here. I'm going to do this because I know, oh, come on, if I, look, stop it. <laughs> Void or match case find all because there are some void 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 that's it's just like shared um, there should be like a special yeah special type void there we go and of course you're barking at me because it's an I type symbol. Um, what I'm trying to, s it knows that a void is a special kind of type. Um, return type, it's fine. None. There we go. Okay. So this is basically just saying look at the method, its return type, and if it's, if it's a special type, it's this special type is equal to void. Right. If it isn't a special type, then it would just return none here but i'm looking for did you return void so now i'm at the point where i'm like it's a business rule you're in the method is execute it is a sync and you did return void now we need to say you got to change it so that you're actually um, we want to report the diagnostic basically so what we're going to do hopefully to end the episode is i'm going to put this in here we're going to grab this put it there then I gotta close this one down so that it gets the changes now. And if we run this, we'll just see if it actually puts in the the analyzer, the the uh, the failure, so to speak, yeah. that I found this correctly. We'll see if that works. Pick that one. And wait a little bit. And then 
We don't want any of these up. I want to go back to my one here, business row cases. And so this is it. should have an error. And look at that. Ta-da! Ta -da. Success. So, so yes, and we're not going to write any of you tests. Just get committed, because Rocky will just rubber stamp it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps sticking that block in all your code. And then we'll ask you one it. day, I'll be like, what's that interesting you know, character comparison? Public class, Rocky <laughs> smells. Yeah. Let's <laughs> see if he notices. Little, little Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah, but, the, but this, again, this is the cool thing about it, because um, it, it's picking up this exact case like it should, um, if I had, for example, just to say, like, if I had public class Rocky Smells, <laughs> and I did put in a um, async void execute. So I say, like, public async void execute, like that. See, it's a different yeah. thing, though. It's the async and await. So... Um, but it's it's not that one, so that's a, so that's my point is that See, it's not firing yeah. for just any yeah execute right. So why don't you change those messages so it says Rocky says your code is wrong. <laughs> Rocky says <laughs> you know what's funny you've messed up. <laughs> what's funny is that there is a task up there. It's a low hanging fruit task, but Rocky does have a lot of the messages in CSLA itself, like, like um, exception messages and whatever. He does have it so they can be localized. Okay. And some people actually have gone in and, and localized them. Yeah. I've also said, have you actually checked what people have done? Oh, yeah, to see on the localization. Them? Yeah. Like, if, if there are, like, secret yeah. messages in there or yeah. something, he's like, I've never done that. Just, I've just trusted in the kind of Trusted in what they're saying. Yeah. And I said, maybe you should do that. Yeah. So, maybe when I do that with the analyzers and change some of the, the messages around that, um, maybe I'll make, like, the British... You know, the, what is it like? It's English is E N dash E U S if you're. Yeah. And then there's one for like um, Britain or, yeah. you know, it's because there are some different spellings yep. of, of certain words and stuff. <coughs> shop. Yeah, shop. S H O P P E. Color has a U yeah, for yeah. some reason. Um, cool. So, yeah. So I could do that, put in a translation that says, Rocky says in front of everything. Yeah, <laughs> Rocky would be, says. I should do that. Just send him a picture and go, this is the, I, I'll do that. I'll, I'll change it just here locally. Yeah. And then I'll send a screenshot of it going, hey, I was working on some new analyzers today. Yeah. What do you think about this message? And just see what he says. El Rocky de, el, el hombre de Rocky dice, which means Rocky <laughs> said, the man Rocky said. Yeah, I, just as he. It'd be funny if he just responds with like a thumbs up. Yeah, then you yeah. know he's just rubber stamping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You even see that. I trust you, Jason. <laughs> so we're almost at thirty minutes. So I think this is yeah. a good place to stop. Um, Want to thank Alan for Absolutely. doing the two episodes with me today. I still have a lot more work to do on this um, to get all this done, but at least I got two episodes in at kind of cold. Orlando, it's only like what fifty out today. It's cooler here than uh, up in the Carolinas, as I was mentioning to you, which is very odd because I used to live here in Florida, and this is uh, for November being in the fifties. That's unusual. Yeah. That's more um, January, you know. What especially Orlando is even more south than where I live. So, yeah. but you know what? It's um, it is amazingly warmer here than it is in Minnesota. And I'm sure it is. <laughs> I, I'm sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> That, that's just it, I think that's pretty much every day so um, anyway thank you all for watching leave comments and questions below see you in the next episode